Is your PC unexpectedly crashing out of nowhere? Perhaps you've noticed your fancy new graphics card doesn't seem to be pulling its weight, meaning all the pressure is on your older CPU, so now your games look like they're running on Windows 95. Well, dear viewer, it could be a power supply issue. Hey there, I'm Sarah from Thermaltake Australia, and recently not one, but two people that I know in the span of a week told me about their issues with their PCs. In both cases, I quickly deduced that it was actually a power supply issue, and this made me realize just how little attention a lot of us give to our power supplies. They work tirelessly down the back of our system to keep our PC actually running smoothly, and many of us don't even know which one we have. So in this video, I'm going to give some much needed attention to the old trusty friend, the power supply. So first, let's break down the power supply itself. So to put it simply, your power supply, or PSU, which stands for power supply unit, does exactly what its name suggests. It supplies your PC's hardware with power. It effectively converts the power from your wall socket into power that can run everything inside of your system. So if you have a faulty power supply or your power supply isn't able to provide enough power for the components that you have, you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> now let's talk about the main terminology that you might come across when looking at power supplies. So first we have its rating. You might see this little 80 plus sticker on some power supplies. Now this means that it has an 80 plus certification, which is really one of the first things that you want to look out for when buying a power supply or looking at the PSU that comes with your pre-built PC because, oh my God, please look at the parts that come in your pre-built PC. Don't just buy it. Look, make a look, like look, check. Look at, look at it, look at it, look at it. Thank you. To level with you all, power supplies really don't have a whole lot of quality control involved, unlike many other components. So this is really the best sort of way you can see what kind of power supply you're gonna be getting. So to acquire this certification, the power supply needs to have more than 80% energy efficiency at 20, 50, and 100% of its rated load. Now, I know that sounds really confusing and that's because it kind of is, but it basically just pertains to how energy efficient the power supply is when working to power your PC. So if your power supply doesn't have this rating at all, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just means that you might not be using the most efficient source of power for your system, because there's actually no other official way to know. Alongside the 80 plus, you might notice a color. This will either be bronze, silver, gold, or for more higher end systems, you might even be looking at platinum or even titanium. The colors basically mean it is more efficient the higher you get. For example, the 80 plus bronze rating means that the PSU is rated for at least 82% efficiency at 20% load, 85% at 50%, and 82% at 100% load. Then on the higher end, you've got platinum, which means the PSU is rated for at least 90% efficiency at 20% load, 92% at 50% load, and 89% at 100% load. It basically just showcases what your PSU can be capable at under load. Most standard PCs will run happily with a bronze to gold rated power supply, with really only more higher end ones needing a platinum or above PSU. Okay, next let's talk about fully modular, non-modular, and semi-modular power supplies. So these basically are the types of power supplies that you will come across. The aforementioned wording pertains to the cables and how they'll actually arrive to you. See, power supplies have a lot of cables, but you won't necessarily need to use all of them. Non-modular power supplies mean that every cable is installed into the power supply unit. These tend to be the cheapest option of the three, however, you might actually find yourself with some cables you won't actually use, so they end up just taking up a lot of space in your system for really no reason. On the other end of the spectrum, you have fully modular power supplies. So this is a power supply unit that comes with all of the cables separate, meaning that you only need to plug in the ones that you're actually using and the rest you can just return free to the wild. These often tend to be the most expensive of the three options though. So lastly, to round out the group, there is semi-modular. Now as you can probably guess, this option has some cables pre-attached and some not. 
Usually this means your core cables like CPU, 24 pin and PCIe cables are installed, but extras like SATA or Molex will be loose because not every build requires them. Because I briefly touched upon them just then, let's quickly go over the cables a power supply needs and what they do. So while I know power supplies look really difficult to understand and install, they really aren't once you just break down where each cable needs to go. So just because why not, I'm gonna go do that really quickly for you right now. <laughs> So first you got your big boy, the 24 pin connector cable. So this powers your motherboard and most of the time it goes to the right of your motherboard. It is honestly in a super obvious spot, trust. Next you got your CPU cable. Now this is usually an eight pin cable and it looks very similar to the PCIe cable, but please don't mess this up by getting confused. You'll know it's a CPU cable if it can split into two four pin headers because some older or smaller motherboards only actually require four pins, but a lot of the standard ones nowadays will require all eight. Usually the CPU cable should insert into the top left of your motherboard. Then you've got your PCIe cables. So you usually get a couple of these, but these cables go into your graphics card. So super easy to locate where they go as well. So those are the core three cables that you'll need, but if you are running a 2.5 or 3.5 inch storage drive, you will need to plug in one of these, which is a SATA cable. So this provides power to your drives, but it doesn't connect them up to your motherboard. You will need a separate cable for that, which usually comes with either your drive, case, or your motherboard. Finally, you might find these bad boys, which are Molex cables. So we use them a lot for peripherals like fan controllers, but not every brand uses them. So you may not ever see them. Cool, well that's cables. Now let's jump lastly into wattage. So we've made it to the big guns, a power supplies wattage. So put as plainly as I can, your power supplies wattage is the maximum amount of power it can output under 100% load. For example, if you have a 650 watt PSU, your components will get a maximum of 650 watts to work with. Now, it's pretty easy to find out how much power your PC will need. Simply pop all your hardware into a program like PC Part Picker or Outer Vision Power Supply Calculator, and it'll actually tell you roughly how much wattage it will need. So simply just pick a power supply that can handle it. For example, if your PC's hardware would require at least 500 watts to work, then looking at getting a 550 watt or 650 watt power supply would be perfectly fine. But Kara, I hear you ask, why not just get a 1000 watt power supply? It'll make it more powerful, right? Not really. I mean, sure, you can, but why would you? For starters, the price tag is a lot more for higher wattage. And secondly, your PC will never need to use that much power with the hardware that it has, so it's hardly very efficient. Sure, like it'll work, but like some sources actually say that it's likely to give your power supply a shorter lifespan. So like, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> the only real reason to do something like this, in my opinion, is if in two months time you'll be upgrading the rest of your rig and it will require that much power. So it's really more of an investment for the future. But otherwise, just find the right power for your hardware and buy a PSU with the best wattage to support it. Anyway, it's here in the wattage area where a lot of issues arise for people. So these days, our PCs are using more power than ever due to the newest lineup of graphics cards. 30 series cards from Nvidia, for example, can pull upwards of 350 watts each individually under load. So if you're rocking a really low wattage old power supply you inherited from your dad, but you have a 3090, maybe look at an upgrade. <laughs> So for the 30 series cards, especially the ones on the higher end, honestly, I'd recommend around 750 watts and above at a minimum, because otherwise your CPU will find itself terribly bottlenecked. So we do actually have a video coming out about bottlenecking, or if this is in the future, it might already be out, which you can check out here when it's up. But basically, if your GPU isn't getting enough power, it, it means that your CPU will have to pick up the slack, which effectively means your 3090 isn't really being used to its full potential. And like, they are cheap. So like, why wouldn't you want to use it to its full potential? It's like those people who have a Lamborghini just sitting in their garage, but they never actually take it out. Like, why buy something like that if you can't show it off to the plebs who can't afford it, you know? Me, I am plebs. I am the pleb who can't afford it. And so that brings us to the end of this power supply breakdown. Hopefully I haven't overloaded you. 
no pun intended, with information, but understanding your power supply can save you a world of hurt later and it's something that's actually well worth being informed about. If you do have any other questions about power supplies that you want answered or perhaps you want us to do another video going into even more information about power supplies, feel free to pop them below and let us know. We'll do our best to answer them for you or even make that part two. If you like this video though, please give it a thumbs up and let us know and subscribe to our channel, remembering to ding the bell so you never miss an upload from us. And while you're still here, remember to check out any of these other great Thermaltake videos. It'll be on the screen around me somewhere. We'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember, you've got the power. Did a bit of Ariana Grande there. Yeah.